Hi everybody! Did you know that it is possible to use your iPhone like a mirrorless professional digital camera for recording videos? I'm not talking about using native apps on your iPhone. It's a matter of installation of a new app on your iPhone and then you have access to all of those professional settings, FPS, ISO, shutter speed and even white balance. I am Said and you are watching The Key Channel. First of all, you need to install Pro Movie app. This is one of the greatest ones that can be used for this specific purpose. It is specially developed to record videos. In this video, I am going to tell you how to use it specially to record videos for YouTube. But still, I will describe every detail related to this app which enables you to record videos for other purposes as well. Let's start. This is the Pro Movie app appearance. And here is our actor helping me recording this video today. On top, from left to right. First, we have the timer of recording and then the remaining time for recording based on the storage, more than 30 gigabytes on this iPhone. And then the stabilization mode that I will be describing it for you a slight later and the remaining battery and the charging condition. All of the things that are normally seen on a screen of a digital camera. And then, on the left side, as you see, we have three different modes. First, second, third, and again, the first one. Uh, here we can see the object and also the settings around the screen. This one is a full screen mode without anything to adjust. And then, the third one. Uh, with blurred adjusting things. This one is great for me. And then this gear. It has a lot of great things for you. First of all, you can determine your camera. Of course, you don't want to use a selfie camera for a YouTube video. You want to use your back camera. Wide. The wide camera uses, of course, your wide camera. Look at the right side, a top with f stop of 1.8. Of course, you cannot change it. This is not a digital camera, all in all. This one is an iPhone. So you cannot change everything that you want, but it is still very great. The next one is Tele. This one uses your portrait camera. It is very great. Really, a professional uses Tele mode and then put the camera away from the object. If you have enough space, of course you need to use this one. And then, look at the right side at the top, the other stop is 2.8. It means that it can capture a lot of light, so you don't need to lit up everywhere, like the time that you are using the wide camera. The next option is video stabilization mode. On the last mode, maximum, it prevents a lot of movements of your camera. I am moving it now, but you don't see a lot, right? Uh, it really stabilizes your video. And then flashlight, screen brightness, overlay. Overlay also can help you a lot. You may want to use grid, something like this, or you may want to use Another kind of overlay, Level, which is activated by default on this app. It has a bubble at center and also a cross. They both at the same time help you level your camera. The next option is Transform. You may want to do some flip, rotate or etc. on your camera before doing any edit on it. For example, flip, right? Or something else which is very interesting for me is anamorphic mode. In some cases, when you want to have more attention of your audience, this mode helps a lot. I don't know why, but it works perfectly. And then I turn it off. In settings, just in advanced, we have a couple of great things. First of all, do not use this one. 
always use uh, H264 encoding because it is very compatible. And also, turn on this feature, use volume buttons. When it is turned on, volume up means start recording. When you press volume down, it stops recording. This one is really great because you may not uh, have access to the screen of your iPhone when you're using it like a digital camera. The next important icon is the third one. You can determine what you want to really record. Of course, for uh, YouTube, 4, 3 is not appropriate. You need to use 16, 9. And also, you don't want to record a 4K video because of this quality is not uh, used at all in uh, YouTube. 1080p is exactly the thing that you need. And then about frame rate. Of course, you know that FPS means the number of frames that are captured for creating one second of video. For example, if you put it on 50, it means that your camera takes 50 images and then connects them to each other and create one second of video. Consider 24 and 120. It doesn't necessarily mean that 120 is better than 24. It depends on the usage. 24 and 25 are both industrial film standards. For example, all Hollywood movies are created from 24 and 25. Because these are very natural to human eye. 30, 48 and 50 creating a sense of home videos. Also, they are used for news programs. 60 and 120 are especially developed to edit videos as slow motions. For example, you record a video and then you want to make a slow motion out of it. 60 and 120 frames per second are very great because you have enough frames to create a great video. But here is a very important recommendation. If you use a green screen and then you want to eliminate it during addition and then you want to use another kind of background for yourself, all the times use 60. 24 and 25 are very great, but they are not, they don't have enough quality for an elimination of the green screen. So use 60. And about the quality, low quality is standard. What is better for us? Of course, the standard is quiet enough. The microphone. If you have a Bluetooth microphone, that is very great. You can use it during the time that you are recording your video. But if you, like me, use an external microphone to record your voice and then sync these files together, uh, recording your voice on the iPhone with will be very helpful for you because it helps you sync the files that you have created. You can use audio format of AAC or PCM. Of course, AAC is something more compatible. In the end, when you have recorded your videos, you can find them here and you can transfer them somewhere else and I will be describing it for you slightly later. And now, I want to show how we can use this great app like a really pro digital camera. More actors joining us. First of all, you need to determine FPS based on the thing that you want to do with your camera. And after that, this is the time to determine the ISO. ISO digitally determines the amount of exposure for each frame of the video that you are creating. Higher numbers means more exposure. And lower numbers means less exposure. Lower numbers are great if you have enough lighting. Something around 100 is quite typical. And then the shutter speed. So first you need to determine FPS and then ISO and finally shutter speed. Shutter speed is the time of exposure of each frame. Instead of ISO, which was amount of exposure, shutter speed is the time of exposure. 
Really, 100 doesn't mean 100. It is 100th, right? So when you use smaller numbers, it means that your frames are getting separated from each other because each of those frames have very smaller amount of exposure. So there would be several gaps between them. So these are great for war movies. If you have enough movements of your camera, you will sense it, you will understand it very easily. And then if I use larger numbers, larger numbers means that in the time of exposure becomes very long. So there would be no gap between different frames. It creates a kind of dreamy video. The rule of thumb is that when you use ISO 100, multiply it by 2 and then the shutter speed should be something like 200. After all, you need to look at the light meter. It is nearly at the center. That's almost alright. If you don't have enough light, it will go to our left. It means that you need to increase the lighting. Do not change FPS, do not change ISO, shutter speed. These are determined based on the things that you want to do. They are not related to the amount of light. If you don't have enough light, you need to increase the light. And then at the end, the most important difference between a great video and a bad video is related to white balance, not ISO, shutter speed, etc. Everybody knows about them. Look at this white balance you should show your camera what is exactly white in a specific condition and lighting your camera doesn't understand it by itself you can use daylight cloudy etc these are predetermined amounts but it don't work at all uh, if you use a digital camera of course you need to do it with a gray card this is the best way that you can adjust it so your uh, digital camera understands what is exactly white and then adjust all the colors based on it. It is quite normal to use a gray card, 18% of gray and then the rest is white. But surprisingly, iPhone does a great job if you use automatic white balance. Each video that you are creating with this method will be very great and brilliant. All of the uh, colors are quite normal and natural. So trust it and use white balance in auto mode. And then look at this. You may not want to do all of these things, right? You may not want to use your iPhone to uh, use it like a really pro camera. Instead, there is another great way. Look at this one touch the lock in here and then everything becomes automatic. The automatic mode in this app on an iPhone is not the thing that you can see on digital cameras. It doesn't really mean to use a digital camera in auto mode. It cannot create a good video for you. It will create something that you cannot use at all. And then here on auto mode, everything becomes very great. Look at this. If I move my hand toward it, white balance, ISO, focus, everything is changing. And still, everything is okay, right? So, if you don't want to use all of these strange things, uh, trust on auto mode. It is not similar to the thing that you can see on a digital camera. And at the end, when you have recorded your videos, Touch this one, and then all of your videos are available here. Apparently, if you select something from here, you are not able to send it to your photos, right? There is no option for doing that. You can save it on files, but look at this. Instead, first open it, and then touch the share option. And here you can export it to videos or photos. I have a couple of tips for you to get the most out of your iPhone and your app during video recording. The first tip is that you need to connect your iPhone to a monitor using an adapter. 
uh, using which you are able to monitor yourself all the time during the recording session. This is not something strange. If you want to use even a real digital camera, you need to connect it to a monitor because that very small screen of the uh, digital camera doesn't work for you at all, especially when it is not near to you during recording. If you don't have that adapter or extra monitor, instead record a check video beforehand. Most digital cameras have a 30 minute limit for video recording, generally because of heat accumulation. iPhone doesn't have such a limit, but still, if you record video with your iPhone for several minutes, you will notice that it becomes so hot that the touch screen won't work anymore. To prevent it, this is tip number two. Divide your video into sections, around 10 minutes and 12 minutes at most. When you have recorded one section, you can wait slightly and then start another section. This way, your iPhone will have enough time to cool down in between. And then, your files will not go more than 4 GB, which is the limit of transferring files from your iPhone to your computer. If that becomes more than 4 GB, you need to cut your video into smaller pieces, which is a quiet whole headache. To prevent it, record your videos uh, with sections less than 10 or 12 minutes. And one last thing, do not forget to turn on airplane mode and also do not forget to activate do not disturb before starting to record a video with your iPhone. Your iPhone is of course your smartphone, so somebody may call you during recording a very important video. Thanks for watching this video, hope you enjoyed, and I hope that you have a very great video recording.